All right, good. Uh, the, th the third mistake. So, for, so far, we've talked about trying to appeal to everyone as common mistake number one. Common mistake number two is uh, making your practice appear like a luxury purchase as, rather than a need. And, um, and that can reduce uh, your client's spending on you. Uh, and now common mistake number three is, uh, is similar to number, uh, number two, uh, promoting your level of emotional or spiritual advancement and sort of highlighting that. Um, now, health and wellness culture is highly spiritualized. Um, I'm hard pressed to find any one of us who doesn't think of our spiritual practice as the number one healthy thing we do, right? In, in some levels, it's like health and wellness practitioners believe in spirituality 70% and the medicine 30%, right? And, um, and, that, uh, and, and that's probably true. I mean, there's just great scientific evidence uh, uh, for the fact that spiritual healing is the bulk, not the, uh, not the uh, small part of, uh, uh, of health. But as a clinic, right? As a clinic, uh, you know, what is our role? We have to think about that. And what is our, what, why are clients coming to us? Are clients coming to us because we are a priest or are clients coming to us because uh, we are a, we have medical knowledge, right? And we just have to ask that question. And it's hard to do both. Right? You could be the construction worker on the house and the interior decorator as well, but usually that's not the case. Right? The person who picks out the couches and the paintings for the wall and makes the place beautiful um, is a different person than the person who does the framing right? and is he handling the nuts and bolts of the house. And, uh, and so just because both are needed, right? the house needs a couch at the end and the house needs a beautiful countertop at the end, right? Uh, but the house also needs bones, right? And so uh, what level are you coming in at? And, uh, and are you speaking to that? So if you're uh, creating a medical practice, a medical clinic, again, which is what we're talking about here tonight, is creating a clinic, you're not necessarily going to lead with the fact that you're uh, an emotionally sensitive, um, you know, spiritually advanced uh, provider. Uh, your client uh, especially if, uh, you know, if your client has a, has a medical need, um, they, they just, they just want to know that you're a credible provider that can deliver relief from, from the symptoms they have. Right. And if they feel that you are that credible provider, they will be willing to do something spiritual, or they will be willing to make a diet change and they will be willing to make a lifestyle change. You know, only once in my uh, practice did I have a client who just flat out refused to make any changes. And so then I asked the client, well, what kinds of changes are you willing to make? And he's like, well, I guess I'm not really willing to make any changes. I was like, well, why not? And then my, you know, my uh, discussion with that client was helping them understand why they didn't want to make changes and whether that was a reasonable attitude to take. And well, I never saw that client again. Uh, what can you do, right? <laughs> um, but the average client's going to have limited financial resources, and they just want to know you're a credible provider that can deliver relief from their symptoms. And once they feel certain of that, you can, they will open the door to changes that you suggest. Okay? So, um, so if you do pepper in some spiritual advice into your clinic, I mean, you should disclose that you do that to your clients so that they know what they're walking into. But I wouldn't necessarily put that front and center on your marketing. Instead, I would focus on the problem that you're solving. And, uh, and that will, uh, I think, uh, be easier uh, to receive. And, uh, and you know, there, there are con health consumers that just really want spiritual uh, healing. And, uh, and they're going to seek spiritual healers for that. And, uh, and that's and that's what they're looking for. And I just want to say that's only one target market. And because every single health and wellness practitioner I know is highly spiritual, that market's a bit saturated. And so I just want to mention that. Um, and, and, and sometimes it feels like everyone in the health and wellness industry is copying and competing with each other with that kind of emotional intuition or spiritual messaging. 
And that makes that kind of messaging invisible uh, to clients because they just see it on every single site and they have no way of determining who does better at it than another. What is highly unusual and very special in health and wellness marketing is a clinician that puts clinical results first, that puts clinical success first and speaks to that. How rare is it do you see on an acupuncturist website or an Ayurveda practitioner's website or a uh, nutritionist's website or, um, or even most medical doctor's website? How often do you see something along the lines of 90% of my clients report reduction of arthritis symptoms after two months and three sessions, right? But that right there is like such a convincing statement to make to a client. Uh, it's a wonder. It's a wonder why you don't uh, see that more often. All right, great. Let's just, uh, I just wanna bring this home for a minute and take a look at some examples of um, emotional kind of promotion. And I'll take a look at a practitioner here in Asheville, uh, Tracy Malone. Now, Tracy Malone may have a very successful uh, practice and I have no idea whether her practice is successful or not. So I'm not making a statement about how great she is as a practitioner or how successful uh, she is uh, financially. All I'm uh, bringing up is this is a website that leads with a sort of a more of the emotional side of things. Imagine a calm, comfortable, and enjoyable relationship with food or eating. And then it says, are you looking for something different? Now, all of us on the call here tonight feel like our practice is different, right? So when I read, are you looking for something different? I'm like, wow, Tracy Malone is like every single health and wellness practitioner I know because she thinks her practice is different. And as a client, I'm looking here like, do I want something different? No, I wanna fix my acid reflux or I wanna fix my MS, right? So uh, I'm getting a little hint at what she might do, satisfying relationship with food. Yeah, everyone kind of wants that. Um, moving away from strict and rigid rules. Okay, yeah, but I still don't know how she's gonna help me, right? Moving away from strict and rigid rules is not a relief of, uh, of a symptom I'm having. Okay, so I still don't really know what it is that she's getting at here. Down here, I see, oh, she can help me with weight loss goals. Oh, okay, so this is, she's talking about relationship with food and eating regarding weight loss. And I, maybe I could have guessed that. Uh, she has a weight neutral care guided by a non-diet approach. I, that sounds really confusing to me, right? Uh, take care of yourself, yeah, every single health and wellness practitioner has that too, right? Eat in a way that works for you, yeah, okay. Get support with your child's nutrition growth and development. Okay, now I'm talking about children here. I still don't know, can she help me, right? So now, again, she may have some other successful marketing and promotion things, but when I get to this point in this, I have no idea whether Tracy can help me. And so, uh, and so I, 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 um, I, don't, I don't know if I would choose this uh, nutritionist, but it's not because she's not skilled or not. I just don't know what her skills are. I have no idea. And um, all right, now let's take a look at um, uh, John Dulyard's side. I mentioned him before. Now he, uh, you know, has some stuff up top, Life Spa, Ancient Ayurveda Wisdom Meets Modern Science. It's uh, some few general things, November Seasonal Diet Guide. But let's look, look at his articles. Chaseberry for PMS, menopause, and infertility. If I have PMS, menopause, and fertility, guess where I'm going to click? Ayurveda for prostate health. I'm a guy. You know, I'm in my 50s. I don't know if I have any prostate issues or, or not. Uh, but, um, but, you know, as you get to your late 60s and, and 70s or whatever, that's an issue for most men. So, yeah, I kind of want to know about that. Um, microbes and healthy aging. Yeah, that's, uh, that seems like anyone who is concerned with their aging is going to click on that. 
fight hypoxia and breathe better. Anyone who has had coronavirus is going to click on that one. Breast health and vitamin D, right? This is all very specific benefits that are easy to identify on Dr. Juilliard, Dr. Juilliard's website. So I think of that as, uh, as successful. Now, again, he's um, kind of branching off and trying to appeal to everyone, which I said was mistake number one. Um, and, uh, but he's also, you know, already very successful. He's on Dr. Oz and all that. And he probably has a team of people uh, ghostwriting for, for these kinds of things. And then maybe he may look them over or whatever. I, I don't know how he does it. Um, but for um, the rest of us mere mortals, uh, we, and here, Dr. Ox, another very uh, successful person here. Um, 11 foods that make you taller. Uh, the worst Halloween candy, very contemporary. Um, improving allergies and gut health. It's just there's the content is specific to specific problems, and uh, and uh, and so all, and and what you notice on both of these sites is that they don't really have to say much about um, being a spiritual guru, right? On Dulyard's uh, website here. You see the there's a lotus flower there, but you don't get the feeling that if you're going to if you have a, a consultation with him that um, you know it, it you get the feeling that it will be a clinical consultation that you, you will be discussing medicine that he's knowledgeable about uh, vitamins and nutritional supplements and things like that right um, and you know you could may guess that there's a little bit of uh, spirituality that's going to come uh, on on it as well but by and large very professional looking image. And, uh, and most of the professional successful clinicians with a full practice I know, that's how they're promoting themselves.